hurt, and they've hey. been hurt, and they didn't know which one they wanted to play when both of them got healthy. Hey, what I, about I, the quote machine? Well, these two guys together. Oh well, yeah. that's it. They we should need just, that. They should we love that. The football celebration. Season. We don't need the football the season. To y'all. Just make it a reality show the whole year, because that's all. Put it on HBO and call it Hard Knocks for the whole year. What I want to know is they 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 party together on on Wednesday. How come you didn't get your invitation to party? They asked me, but I was busy. I was watching from the back. I saw you guys from the balcony. Shout to Luda, too. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap it up for uh, third down here. Well, we're going to split third down. When we get back, you know what? They're starting to recruit these guys, these uh, quarterbacks, at a very young age. Uh, out there in USC, they're, they're recruiting a 13-year-old. Is that good for college? Do you guys have a problem with that? Say that. We'll come back a little bit later and talk about it in the show. But still coming up, uh, the Saints. All right, welcome in to First and Ten. Mike Hill hanging out with Skip Bayless, Jalen Rose, our NBA analyst, and Ken Hamlin, Dallas Cowboys safety. All right, game is almost here. The hype is almost over. Who's going to win this game and why? Guys, I'm very excited. The game is here. Two number one seeds for the first time since the early 90s, which means we have the two best teams. New Orleans is a tremendous story. We know about everything they've been through as a city and as a team. Drew Brees is having a great season, but I'm picking the Colts. Too much Peyton Manning. I think he's going to carve their defense apart. Reggie Wayne, one of the top receivers in the game. Dallas Clark, one of the top tight ends. And he gets production from other players like Garcon and Kali when needed. You have Peyton Manning on one side, so you have that guy that's going to run their offense. Um, but I, I look at the whole team that, that, that Saints have. They have Brees. They have all the receivers. They have three backs that can run the ball. They have a special team that has been making plays all year. And their defense has been creating turnovers. I got to go with the Saints. I think that they're going to be making the plays when needed. Mm. They're going to create some turnovers because Peyton wow. Manning can make mistakes, and he will make mistakes in this I'm game. I'm just shocked you're making that pick because your <laughs> Dallas Cowboys went in there late in the season and just shut that offense down. One of seven on third down for Drew Brees. And that defense you're talking about was ranked 25th, and Peyton Manning will shred that defense. And the only reason I'm not picking Indy by 17 is because of the Freeney issue, which I didn't know about until early in the week when it broke. And that dropped me down to make it more of a seven-point game because I think it's a huge, huge plus for the Saints. But I still think Peyton carves them up, and it'll be high-scoring 38-31 Indy. All right, Indy, Indy, and the Saints. You get great debate like that every weekday on ESPN2. It's a show called First Take, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, every weekday. Check it out. Finish up third down now, and of course they just had the big college football signing day earlier this week. And I know college football coaches and recruiters want to grab them young and be the first. But 13-year-old um, quarterback out of Delaware, seventh grader named David Sills, has verbally committed to USC. Skip, do you have a problem with this? You know, I'm not going to overreact to this. I have no problem with it. I think it's just a harmless publicity ploy. Nothing in concrete. When Tim Floyd was the USC basketball coach, he offered to a 14-year-old. When Jim Caldwell was at Wake, he offered to, to an eighth grade uh, uh, Chris, Chris Lee. Chris Lee, yep. He's in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lane Kiffin at Tennessee to Eric Berry's 13-year-old little brother. It, it creates publicity for the school, for the kid, and in this case, the kid's quarterback guru who taught Leinart and Matt Barkley. Mm -hmm. No problem. Steve Clarkson. Well, it seems like Lane Kiffin likes to be in, in, in the media, so yep. in Tennessee and everywhere else he was at. I mean, mm -hmm. so I think that he's doing another thing, uh, you know, in USC. He's just trying to get in the media, trying to get something going on. Um, this guy, I don't think uh, anything serious about it because you can't assess a, a, a football player like you could assess a basketball player at a young age. Well, well Clarkson, that, that quarterback guru, did say he is better right now than Jimmy Clausen and, and Matt Barkley. So, and Clarkson is one of the preeminent quarterback coaches in the nation. So, Okay, as, at 13 years old, let's talk about some of the things you should probably be focusing on, the things that we were probably focusing on, like <laughs> puberty, <laughs> okay? like acne, like do I like pizza or burgers? You know, oh. those are the kind of things a middle school kid should be allowed I, I to concentrate on. I think he already on. focused on and, puberty. And, <laughs> and now what happens is you, you take like... away this child's innocence. Now instead oh. of him allowed to be a seventh grade player, an eighth grade player uh. that's just 
got promise. Now he has a bullseye. Now he has a target. Now he has hanger-ons. Now he has people that's trying to find a way to get next to him because you know what happens when you get to the NFL or to the NBA. I was the guy when you was in eighth grade, I did this for you. Yeah. I was the guy when you was in 11th wait grade a second. that had your back. This sounds like what Jalen Rose went through when he was in seventh grade. Am I right? It's much different <laughs> being a football player I, it, it, because I tell you, the game in football is much more physical. That's why you have to be two years removed from high school because because you'll get broke off playing football. Exactly. And as a quarterback, he still has a lot to learn. Obviously, he's young. He still has a lot to grow, learn. I mean, he has a lot to go through in football before he can even think about. Okay, I, I agree with that. But Jalen, is the world gonna end because of this? I'm not saying that the world's gonna end. The thing, the thing that makes it a problem, Skip, has he chosen a high school yet? <laughs> he's seventh grade. Th that, that's my whole point. Don't put the cart before the horse. Allow this kid to mature, grow, and concentrate on things a 13-year-old should be concentrating on. He probably still trying to figure out if his parents are going to let him have a cell phone or a Facebook page. Yeah, right. And he's picking a college? Come on now. Oh, instead, hey, it's of, ridiculous. instead of Lane Kiffin using that time to look at this young kid, he should have been using that time to look at another recruit that could actually help him within the next couple of years before he goes to his Boy, next school. You guys are sounding like old men to me. <laughs> his father says he's always wanted to go to USC. And, oh, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter until he actually signs. It's great for the kid. It's yeah. great for the parents. Yeah. Great, you know, it gives him motivation. We're, but We're talking about it. And USC exactly. is talking about it. Speak, uh, former USC uh, Reggie Bush uh, is getting ready for the Super Bowl. But will he be an X factor in the game? We'll debate that coming up in fourth down. But for now, let's send it over to Dana. All right, Mike, getting to the NFL isn't as easy as the April draft for some. We've heard stories of bartending. All right, so uh, big time money on the line for Reggie Bush as we uh, finish up fourth down right here. Of course, he is a, a huge player right now. As a matter of fact, that oddity of no player returning a punt or a touchdown, it could change because of Reggie Bush. That prediction? No, it's not going to happen. But he could Maybe be a factor. this guy. But I'm going to ask you, saint, <laughs> is Reggie Bush going to be an X factor or no factor in this game? Okay, I'm going to guess that he makes one spectacular play, maybe two. And yet, th this is my problem. So that's a yes. With, with this, well, I'm going to give you that, but I'm just <laughs> guessing. But, but, but my problem with this question and this whole concept is that Reggie Bush has fallen into this can't lose niche in pro football. That we've all accepted that the number two pick in the draft that everybody thought should have gone number one in the draft is now always game after game that X factor all year long sitting right here. I've heard. This could, he may make the difference in this game. Sometimes he, he does. Every once in a while, he does make the difference. But a lot of the time, he makes no difference to the point that when he doesn't make a difference, nobody cares, nobody notices because he's the X factor. And so in a way, he's, he's like his girlfriend now because she gets more attention for doing less, seriously. <laughs> well, she's famous for being famous. And in part, Reggie is too in pro football because he's never lived up to the hype, but we accept the fact he's the X factor, right? Well, tell me I'm, I'm wrong. Well, no, you're, you're right in a way. I think that he'll be an X, X factor, but it, it depends on his defense. If his defense stops the Colts and makes them punt, he'll get more opportunities okay. All right. to return yeah. the ball. He'll okay. get more opportunities to where he can be that X factor. I feel like they, if they punt to him, then it's going to be a problem. because He's going to take one of them, at least one or two. And two it might not be touchdowns, but he's going to take it deep enough to where oh. – they have an opportunity to score on offense with him. Get it off. You get that offense past the 50 yard line. I believe it's going to be points. Okay, but remember now, right. he also can be the un X factor for the Saints because he'll drop a punt every once in a while as he did against the Vikings. Well, the thing right? about Reggie Bush is yes, he didn't live up to the next Barry Sanders as a number two pick. And he will be a factor because here's a guy during these playoffs had over 280 plus yards in a game, special teams and all purpose yards. So you mean he, against. The Cardinals. So yes. Yeah. So so he is going to be a factor if he plays at a high level. Mm -hmm. Is he? Has he become an every down back? No. no. Is he their starting running back? No. That's why they have Bell and Thomas. Is he a best receiver on their team? No. That's why they have Colston and the other guys. Mm -hmm. But he is a player that can be a factor in the game. But the exposure mm -hmm. that you want to see from Reggie mm -hmm. Bush probably won't happen until after this season when the team has to decide that they're going to pick up his $8 million option mm -hmm. right. to bring him back close. or to let him go to another <laughs> team where he can prove to be an right. every down player. And, and again, for the record, after that Arizona game, I said that was by far the best game Reggie's played. He played with more passion and conviction and confidence. He looked like he really belonged as 
a number two pick in the draft. But that's the first time I'd seen it. And, and I saw him a couple of days. Sorry, I'm sorry. I saw him a couple of days ago, and he talked about closing the deal. And he looked focused. And he looked disciplined. He looked like he was ready to go. So does we'll it, see. Does it hurt him that the Saints have so many weapons on their team? And they don't necessarily I would throw think a lie on help him at, at it this could stage. Help him. Right. It could help him that they don't focus on him as being that guy, and they focus on everyone else. And he breaks one like he did against Arizona, a few of them like he did against Arizona. Yeah, and again, it could help him. You and I have talked about this, but Sean Payton is obsessed with getting him touches. No doubt. He'll get 15 touches, just flipping it to him, yeah. reversing him. But that's not a lot. He's only averaging 11 touches. That's not a ton of touches. The Saints have had over 20 people score points this year. So they spread around the football to a lot of different guys. Maybe he hasn't lived up to the hype as a running back. But wouldn't you say he's lived up to the hype as a weapon, a pure weapon? Not, not come, you weren't around sitting around here coming out of USC no, I, when I, people I, were going crazy. But, but like he was going to be the, the LeBron James so of the NFL. Up. Weren't the expectations a little too high for him? A little too no, high? Not, not for me. He set them. It wasn't like I don't think anybody else set it for him. I think his play in college set the expectations that yeah. high where he was going to be a special player in the league, but they didn't realize okay, the, he's the, not a he's The not bottom a line here, and we don't have time to do this, mm -hmm. but if you redrafted that 06 draft, trust me, he, he would go way down. He'd be in the 20s. All right, okay. We'll move on. Well, we'll see if Reggie Bush will perform. We, we know one group or person, Pete Townsend, is going to perform. The, the who, when people ask me who's going to be halftime entertainment, I say the who, and they say, say who? the who. <laughs> All right, so if you had your choice, though, of halftime entertainment, <sighs> what would it be? You got to bring Janet back. <laughs> <laughs> you bring Janet back, I promise you, I'm tuned in. I'm watching. I might not watch in the second quarter, but I'm tuned in. I'm tuned in. TiVo in halftime. I thought she retired. <laughs> I'm no? going to leave it alone. Now, I, would, I had to go to my tweet fam for this answer. Tweet really? And I would love to probably say Lady Gaga or Kanye West, but you probably can't trust them oh, on stage. Oh, you can't trust Janet. you don't know <laughs> what they may do. It's older now. And obviously, we can't bring back Michael Jackson, but I wrote down a list of performers that I really respect and appreciate. What about Outkast or Stevie Wonder or The Roots, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Alicia Keys, Lil Wayne, Black Eyed Peas, Justin Timberlake. My point, anyone but the who. Ooh. Anyone but, but the who. Anyone. Yeah. Who are the who? They, they ought to play their big who that? hit, Who Are You? Because that's what everybody's going to be asking, <laughs> yep. right? Yep. I, I'm not the biggest who fan. I'm more Beatles, Rolling Stones. I like them, don't love them. But, but seriously, I, you, you hit one at the bottom of your list. I would love to see Lil Wayne play halftime in the Super Bowl. Now, he'd have to be eligible to, uh, to I mean, be <laughs> available, right? right? Uh, but but yeah. the point is, he's now crossing over with Rebirth. Yeah. This is like he's going into the rock genre. So I think he'd be more accessible to the mainstream exactly. with some of his newer hits. I, I think he's immensely talented. I think everybody would really enjoy watching him work. I everybody love Wayne. Watch. Yeah, I love Wayne. But he, he performed at the Grammy, and half of his performance had to be cut out. Wow. <laughs> How about getting somebody that works in the social media network or somebody in the MTV generation? Just get somebody more current. Well, we'll see. They don't trust Wayne's him. Wayne's not current? Good stuff. No, I'm talking about besides the who. Uh, we'll of leave it oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, that's going to do it for fourth down. Oh, but uh, we still go to the uh, answer to the Sports Nation poll question that's coming up. Which team will win Super Bowl 44, the Colts or the Saints? We will reveal.